Oh, that one hurt. This channel is all about music and friendship, and I'm amazed at the quality of friends that I've been able to make along the way. My friend Billy just sent me this guitar. This is a Huss and Dalton 00 SP, I believe. And so, he wants me to sell this guitar for him, so... Let's tear into this thing. Let's see what's going on. But uh, Billy is, man, am I, this box has so many staples on it. Who stapled this? Billy, did you do this? Or did the UPS store do this? Anyway, uh, Billy is an amazing friend. He knows so much about guitars and he and I tend to really kind of be into the same kinds of guitars. Ow! Oh, oh, that one hurt. I'm not bleeding. But good lord. Alright, here we go. Okay. Ow! Okay. Literally, oh man. So many staples. My finger still hurt. We were talking the other day on Instagram. Uh, I asked Huss and Dalton if they were the first boutique company to start using tweed cases because Boucher, I just had a Boucher uh, here last week. And uh, I asked Huss and Dalton if they were the first, and they said they don't know if they're the first, but they definitely have been doing it since 95. So, anyway, it's a cool little detail that you know that it's a Huss and Dalton or a Boucher um, if they show up in the tweed. This is a 00SP. This one's rosewood back and sides and spruce top. I haven't actually seen pictures of this guitar. I've just, ooh, pyramid bridge. There's the smell. Listen, if you've not been around boutique acoustic guitars, you need to, if for no other reason than just how good they smell. Nope, not in tune. Um, but yeah, so this is, let me see. Oh boy, okay. Tweed case, the handle's different on that one. I wonder if, I mean the rivets are original. Anyway, that one has a totally different handle than others. Uh, but, so this is the 00SP. Right, from Huss and Dalton. Use light gauge strings only. It says 00 SP serial number 2517. I think mine is, my Huss and Dalton TDM is around the same age. But anyway, uh, Pyramid Bridge, and this is a shorter scale length, 24 and 3 quarter, I believe. I'll double check. Has a volute and a slot headstock, Ivoroid buttons on the back, and then it's a Sitka spruce top, East Indian rosewood back and sides with, not sure of the binding, it's a wood binding. I mean, almost, it basically looks like rosewood. It's the same kind of color. But this is a very simple, very simple and subtle, understated parlor. I hate when people call things parlor guitars that are not parlor guitars. Parlor is smaller than a single O. So this is still bigger than a parlor guitar properly. But anyway, let's get it tuned up and see how it sounds. <laughs> A few years ago, I actually filmed a video at Huss and Dalton. It was while I was still I was still working full time, and I took like there was I just had a little window of time in the late afternoon that I could cut work a little early. I ended up getting in trouble for cutting work early, um, but I went and I found one of these. But it was very different than this one. It was one of the ones made uh, from the Tulip Poplar from Jefferson. It's one of the Jefferson guitars. I think at the time they were asking 25,000. I think they've gone up on those. But since then, this shape of guitar has been really interesting to me because it sounds a lot bigger than it looks. And that's that's an exciting thing. So I'm just going into a Zoom H5 here and uh, let me set levels real quick. <laughs> Here we go. 
Okay, so there's a ton of gas in the tank on this guitar. It's tiny, it's light, but it's, an, it's a wide neck width. I need to double check, I'll put the actual nut width up here. Um, but it's, it feels wider than an inch and three quarter and maybe it's not, it might be an inch and seven eighths or 13 sixteenths, but it definitely, it doesn't feel like a classical guitar. That's the biggest thing that my brain goes to when I play a guitar of this style. Sometimes my brain thinks, and I think it's because I had a triple O 16 SGT and somebody came up to me after I played one and they're like, it is so cool that you put steel strings on your classical. And I was like, no, it's not a, whatever. Um, so there's always a, maybe it's a twinge of insecurity on the guitar like this, that it, it looks like a classical. People think it's a classical. Looking at this guitar, I noticed a thing that I've never noticed on a Huss and Dalton or a boutique guitar brand. Now, here's the thing. Factory made guitars are still made by people, but they're made in factories with a certain set of uh, expectations, quality control, practices, jigs, um, compared to boutique guitars are made by people, but they're made by people fewer people in a more specific way. Usually that means tighter allowance and tighter tolerances. Anyway, here's what I'm gonna say. These tuners, it has these really cool Waverly tuners. These are quite expensive tuners on a very expensive guitar and they're crooked. Uh, this is the first time I've ever noticed and I'll, I'll give you a closer look, but man, and it's, I looked at the treble side, the treble side are all in line. The points of the Waverly tuners all match up, but on the bass side, they are crooked. I mean, all three of them are not in line with each other, and uh, they're not even in line with the shape, the rectangle that is the slanted side of the guitar. So, doesn't affect the playability or the tuning or the function of this guitar, but man, if you're spending above $4,000 on a guitar, tuners can't be crooked. So, I don't know, that's the first time I've ever seen a Huss and Dalton um, that just, it's just bad work. So, you know, Take that for what it is. It's very articulate. It has a lot of gas in the tank. It also doesn't really sound like a Martin. It's got a Gibson thing at least sitting here uh, with it and the neck shape. I mean, Huss and Dalton, they are, their etymology or their DNA is more Gibson for sure. The neck shapes, just how they feel, and I know that some of how they brace is more lean towards the Gibson kind of history. And uh, so this is a cool, it's a cool what if. Like what if Gibson would make a double O, like a proper Martin style double O. And uh, so I like this guitar a lot. I like the Ivoroid buttons. Now this guitar will be for sale. You're gonna see this on my Instagram and you're gonna see it on the website. Um, and you, this one didn't show up on a live show, but I also do a live show on this YouTube channel. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe and then come hang out on Friday afternoons. Friday afternoon, two o'clock Eastern time. We hang out, we do all kinds of things. All, uh, we just most recently, I shopped on people's Craigslist all around the country, and then I also, I'll review people's uh, descriptions of their websites, I'll rate your gear, I'll roast your gear. It's just a fun time to hang out and to get more interaction. If you wanna ask me a question, that's probably the best way to do it. The other way is through my website, you can book a call and you can, I mean, we'll, it'll be in this room. And uh, we'll hang out and we'll talk about whatever you need to talk about, you know, whether that's buying guitars, selling guitars, collecting guitars, dealing with people along the way. Anyway. Back to this guitar, um, pyramid bridges are amazing. I like that this guitar doesn't have a pick guard. So this guitar, I mean, it it's very much a time capsule, uh, but it's still a very modern, wonderful boutique guitar. And uh, yeah, so this guitar is really, really cool. So thanks Billy for sending me this. And uh, this is my first reactions, first impressions of uh, this Huss and Dalton TDM. So anyway, see you guys.